Ladies and gentlemen, what is up? And welcome to a guide for the Labyrinth of Legends for first runners. So this is a guide that has been very, very requested to kind of consolidate all of my tips uh, for Labyrinth of Legends and give you kind of the full spectrum of how the experience is going to be, what you're going to need, how to prepare for it, and uh, yeah, just give you a realistic view of what it's like to complete the Labyrinth of Legends for the first time. So we're going to be jabbering on quite a bit in today's video. It's probably going to be out 15 to 20 minutes going over all the tips might be a little bit longer uh, but if you want to skip that all if you just need this as a point of reference there will also be a written guide so we've done about five pages on it uh, giving tips for like every uh, boss and telling you which order and which paths to go down uh, so yes that will be in the description of this video if you just want to kind of access that quite quickly go for it uh, I do encourage that as well but you know if you want if you want the real stuff guys if you want the solid info uh, this video is the one for you so anyway, let's give you, uh, let's talk about like the, the bottom line of Labyrinth, right, is you need some specific champions. It is very, very difficult. You need to be insane at playing the game to be able to do it without spending a lot of units. And the final thing is there's some BS. There's a lot of BS. There's a lot of frustration. There are five bosses in particular that will have mechanics that just really, really frustrate you. And there's no amount of skill that will overcome these mechanics. They are meant to just make you spend as much as possible. And that's one of the really frustrating things about Labyrinth, is while there are some bosses that are really fun and a great challenge, and if you play really well, you can get them down on the first try, there are a few bosses in there which are like spend, spend, spend. And we'll talk about those bosses in a little bit of detail, but it's mainly Magic War Machine and Maestro. And Unstoppable Colossus and Falcon to a certain extent but uh yeah there's some bs guys you got to be prepared to deal with that anyway let's talk about how you get prepared so the ideal champion to do labyrinth of legends with um is a five star rank four duplicated star lord it is by far like miles and miles better than any other option however the kind of free alternative options that we've seen players do it with uh, are a five star rank four, uh, four storm and that's kind of the second suggested one because that seems like the uh the second most efficient method if you want to uh not spend that many units uh having rank four characters as a five star is really really good as well because it increases the rage timer uh, which you have to deal with in the labyrinth by quite a bit so that's why rank four characters as a five star are so incredibly valuable and in the future, Labyrinth might be a little bit, a little bit less BS as we have, you know, maybe rank five characters as well as rank four ones as a five star. Might make it a little bit easier in the future. But bear in mind, if you want to do it now, it is very, very difficult. Uh, so let's go into the, the two other options, which uh, are expensive options. They're expensive options in terms of units. You have the four star rank five Star Lord, uh, duped, and four star rank five rocket raccoon and that is the maniac choice of champion like if you are a god tier skilled player and you can't get your hands on any of the other characters you got to turn to rocket raccoon that's that's the only way to do it but you got to have a pretty fat wallet for that option now in terms of like the best supporting team synergy so when i did it personally i used magneto cyclops yellow jacket and ant man and this increased my attack on the star lord by quite a bit gave me a really really long enrage timer for every boss on a five star rank four star lord and it was really good but on the bosses that um you know it really counted for and the difficult ones i wasn't really hitting the enrage like it wasn't much of a problem at all they were going down really easily so alternatively like and this is what a, a few players are doing uh, is you can bundle your team with like all your best 550 champions uh, so that just on some of the kind of BS fights where you just need to keep on reviving you can use like additional like options and stuff to deal with those uh, and having like uh, what is it like team revives um, and healing up as a team that's going to be a little bit more cost effective on certain fights but you know there are pros and cons and it really depends on what characters and champions you have but for the most part a fairly solid tactic is building a decent synergy uh, mainly attack based around um your top champion that's that's a pretty solid option but maybe to save like a little bit of units you can you know uh fill your team with uh, other 550s or if you don't have those specific champions then just chuck your other four best ones in uh, and hope hope it works and it should be fine but mainly you just need like you just need one solid champion that you can really bundle behind on most fights so that's why uh, i really do suggest do not attempt it without at least one of these champions uh you know fully maxed out so let's talk about the preparation so the first thing and this is in so so incredibly important this is something that i neglected 
that really cost me a ton of revives and is make sure you are extremely confident at intercepting so just spend so much time on red hulk in arena practicing uh, to make sure you are an absolute god at intercepting and you fully understand how intercepting works so intercepting is basically you know when the target is dashing at you knowing the right frame to uh, attack uh, and intercept their attack and that is just going to help you improve like so much it's going to save you so many units in the labyrinth and especially when you get to unstoppable colossus you are going to need like a really really good knowledge of intercepting if you want to fight uh, finish that fight without spending like dozens and dozens of units and for every fight it's just going to be so so incredibly good so I'll leave a link as well in this guide. I need to add him for uh, Dork Lessons Guide for Intercepting. That's what I did. After, like, uh, had an absolutely terrible experience on the first four bosses, I spent, like, a full day and a bit uh, just in arena, not parrying at all, only landing combos and finishing the fights when I got a successful intercept. And that allowed me to have the basic understanding to clear it uh, without spending, like, an insane amount of units. So that is the number one thing, is make sure you're extremely confident at intercepting a huge part of being able to do the labyrinth without spending a lot is being good at intercepting. So that's it. Uh, the next one is have at least 12,000 units saved up. If you have a Star Lord, it's better to, you know, have a, have a little bit more than you need. Uh, I did it in, I think it was like 10,000 or 11,500 units. Uh, so it was a little bit under budget there. But if you're using a Storm or a four star Star Lord or Rocket, you'll probably need between like 15,000 to 24,000, depending which champion you're going with. But you're going to need a lot. Like if you're using a a four star character because uh, you're going to die so much quicker but yeah we'll talk about that a little bit uh, the next one is build your masteries for maximum offense around the champion you're taking. Uh, willpower, for example, is a, a, a mastery that you just don't need in Labyrinth. Uh, and I've done a suggested mastery setup here with uh, a heavy focus on offense, 39 points in offense, uh, 6 in defense for the additional block proficiency, and then 14 in utility uh, for stuff like increased uh, stun duration, petrify, and pacify, which are very good for fights like uh, Magic and War Machine, if you can time stuff right. Uh, the next thing you need to be aware of is you need to make sure you're really confident at uh, with all the opponent's special attacks on the easy path and how to evade them. We'll talk about all these opponents in a second, uh, but you need to like be really confident that like 95 out of 100 times you can absolutely nail the evade on them, if not 100 out of 100. Uh, but some of the trickiest ones I found was Electra's level 1, War Machine's level 2, and Maestro's level 1 uh, were the most difficult for me. So those are some to practice on, but yeah, just look at the uh, all the enemies in the path and figure out you know what might be your weak point and then just find a dual target of that or go into act four and practice against maestro and just keep on doing that again and again and again because if you get to those bosses in labyrinth and you can't confidently evade their specials you're gonna have to spend like a lot of units so you know that's uh, a solid bit of advice there so this is also something that really screwed me up right so be aware that uh, whenever you enter the fight as the mark of the labyrinth um uh, basically increases the opponent's attack based on your percentage health at the start of the fight. So when you're practicing on Red Hulk, you're always going in 100% right, but when you revive up with a 40% revive, uh, you they are dealing like 300 to 400% more damage. So one of the big mistakes I made on my training was I was, I was, I was pretty much down in Red Hulk, but I was blocking quite a bit. Uh, again, this kind of ties into the being good at intercepting as well, but I was, I was relying on block quite a bit but then when i you know on the live stream when i was um reviving up i was just taking so much damage from the block and i initially couldn't really figure out why because you know i had done so well in the training relying on block however yeah just just something very much to be aware of is that once you actually get into your labyrinth front and you're constantly spending revives you cannot rely on blocking like a couple of blocked hits and you are just dead so you really do need to be perfect at intercepting evading and figuring out you know when to get your combo in after certain specials uh you know on every single fight and the next one is you know all the opponents in uh in, in labyrinth of legends have limber so you only have it's like nine to ten parries or stuns before the opponent recovers so quickly that they are practically immune to your parry and that you can't you know get the stun off on parry anymore so you need to just be aware of that as you're kind of going for every fight but obviously you know try in every fight uh just to uh just to get as far as you can in terms of the combo 
And also, the next one, which is so much fun and 100% skill-based, is be aware all opponents in the labyrinth will randomly evade throughout the fight. And I found it wasn't so bad in most fights, but Maestro was the worst. Like, every fight on Maestro, I swear I'd have, like, you know, two or three evades. You can even look back in the video. We got some, like, such terrible timed evades. And there are points... Uh, you can recover from a lot of evades, but there are points where you'll just get like an evade at such an awkward time uh, Maybe when you're firing off like a special two or something and they'll evade the second component on your Star Lord And you'll just get hit after that and there's like nothing you can do no reaction you can do it's really annoying. I, I wish they didn't have that. It's really, really stupid. Uh, the next one is all about saving top tier boosts and potions. So you don't want to use any potions on any fight apart from, I, I'd say like magic. Uh, magic is the fight to use potions on by far. She's the best one to do that for. War Machine like isn't a bad option, uh, but also all your boosts. Like you want to save Unstoppable, Colossus, Magic, War Machine, and Maestro. Because they are the four most difficult fights by far. They are so, so annoying. Annoying. And uh, again, on magic, it really ties into the 300 to 4 percent more attack. Like her limbo is going to be dealing a lot more damage if you just revive up. So you know, have a few tries on magic, get quite confident at that, fully heal up, and then maybe you can get like a hundred combo and do some really big damage. So yeah, magic is is the worst boss, but we'll talk about it a little bit. Um, so yeah, a test kind of to, you know, if, if you're fine on Red Hulk and it's going quite well, uh, if you can defeat Red Hulk in a single try or last till the final enrage, you know, if you're playing with like a four-star Rocket Raccoon or Star-Lord, then you're probably good to go. You're probably at that right skill level, but you need to be able to do that consistently, uh, you know, to actually ha be at that stage where you're 100% confident to do Labyrinth and not spend that many units. Because a lot of this guide, you know, is aimed at teaching you how to be prepared and and uh, minimize the amount of units you spend. And then the final thing, of course, is be prepared to get quite salty on Magic, War Machine, and Maestro. Those three fights, they're, they're going to be fun. They're going to be very fun. So let's talk about the suggested route for beginners. And I'll just get the uh, the Labyrinth of Legends map up for this. So if we're, we're kind of looking at the bottom, your Red Hulk is the first boss. Then you have Logan. You have Elektra. You have Miss Marvel. You have Unstoppable Colossus. And then you want to take a left turn and go to the Colossus there. And then you want to go all the way up. And during this point, you can get ambushed uh, by some of these uh, goldy, Golden Sim which we'll talk about in a bit. And then you've got Falcon, you've got Gamora, you've got Magic, you've got War Machine, you've got Ant-Man, uh, you've got Deadpool X-Force, you've got Daredevil, you've got Venom, you've got Iron Fist, Civil Warrior, and then Maestro. So let's go back to the uh, document just to sort out, uh, talk about all these fights. So let's just talk about the ambush node quickly. So in any blank node, you can get ambushed by something called a Golden Adaptoid. And these have, I believe, just under 300,000 health. And they have the same special one and special two as Juggernaut. However, they don't get their the unstoppable buff so they're fairly easy to deal with but if you get ambushed just be aware that you know you're fighting against the juggernaut animations so that should help you and it's generally like quite good to get ambushed by these because they give you a generic plus one uh, five star signature stone which is quite valuable it's quite valuable to certain characters uh, but you won't get that till the end of your labyrinth from now let's talk about the fight tips for every fight on this path all 17 of these encounters uh, so red hulk what you need to be aware of just bait the special one just that is my best piece of advice is so so incredibly easy to bait as well i just before we enter these is um in a bit of depth if you want any of these fights like all of them are available on my youtube channel uh, the first four are from the initial labyrinth live stream and then we have separate videos for every individual fight uh well actually there's usually like two champions bundled together but if you look out on youtube you can find videos for every fight from either me or vrto and both of them are quite quite useful resources if you just want to see like how fights are in practicality so red hulk just bait the special one and be aware that his heat charges give him additional physical resistance so he's quite tanky he's going to take you know a lot less damage uh, than some of the other opponents most of the time uh, old man logan is just bait the special one and if you are concerned about you know he has the ability to regen it's still really really pathetic it's like five health per second so it's not really an issue old man logan pretty easy pretty easy i, f I failed way too much on him uh, electra you've got to bait evade and intercept the special one so that's a little bit tricky to get down so make sure you practice that before getting to labyrinth and the special two is much easier to bait 
Uh, but be prepared for that, yeah, multi-special what tiered special one. I'm not too sure why I wrote there. Uh, but yeah, the special two, basically the point I'm trying to convey there is that the special two is much easier to bait, but you need the knowledge to be able to bait and fully evade the special one uh, to successfully get that fight without spending too much. Uh, Miss Marvel, really, really easy to fight. Just bait the special one and make sure you connect with her as soon as she lands. Unstoppable Colossus, this is uh, this is the fight where you will be heavily punished in the wallet if you're not savvy at intercepting, uh, as you don't have the opportunity. So in every previous fight, like after they've used a special attack, you have a great opportunity to go in and get a five combo. Whereas Unstoppable Colossus, he's going to be unstoppable after using his special attack. So it's all about kind of just waiting out the unstoppable, and when he's not unstoppable, getting a successful intercept or parrying, and then uh, getting a combo off there. But because you only have a limit amount of parries you will not get very far in this fight if you cannot intercept you won't get a very decent combo but the key to winning this fight is being good at uh, god at intercepting although it is pretty difficult with the enrage timer anything above like a 70 to 100 combo is pretty good and uh, once you down this unstoppable colossus that's one out of five of the pain in the butt bosses down now the next boss that i really do suggest is colossus uh, again a very important thing after colossus is to um immediately take a left and then go right because if you go straight on instead you've got an option here you can either go for vision spider gwen and cyclops or just fight colossus and i would definitely suggest colossus he has about double the health of any of these opponents but after you fought unstoppable colossus standard colossus is so so easy like it's he's stoppable colossus after that you don't need to worry about unstoppable you just absolutely tear through him and like you know vision's pretty easy spider gwen's gonna be a pain in the butt with their level one and cyclops if you're not super good at evading that level one could you clip you a lot of frustration there so i guess it's 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 really up to you on this one but i definitely suggest for an easier time i definitely go for colossus i went for it he was so easy i got him down in like a few tries after unstoppable colossus but he does have uh quite a bit a bit of health um the only thing is what we need to be aware is that while block he can reflect special attacks and this is kind of a special enigmatic ability uh, for some of the more inner champions in Labyrinth uh, so they all have their unique abilities and this is Colossus's um, so that's not usually an issue, but sometimes he can evade, you know, right as you're doing that first uh, part of the special one and then block and then you fire off your special two and it just reflects the damage back at you and kills you. I had that happen like twice on this boss. It was not a fun experience and that's why it took a few tries and not one try. But yeah, it wasn't that bad. Colossus is very, very easy in comparison to Unstoppable. So then you've got Falcon. It was a, a little bit annoying. So special one is not fully available. So you've got to uh, try and push to the special two as often as possible as that is really easy to evade. But be prepared to die quite a bit from the special one blocking damage because there's not much you can do about it apart from uh, try to play as aggressively as possible to minimize his special ones. And once you've downed Falcon, that's two out of five of the pain in the butt bosses down. I'd probably say he's the easiest out of the, uh, the five pain in the butt bosses. Uh, Gamora is just bait the special one, easy boss, easy life. Uh, and then you've got magic. You've got a lot of frustration coming up so magic is a huge unit grab because whenever she reaches a bar of power or uses a special attack she's going to enter limbo and that's going to deal a huge amount of energy damage to you and there's not really much you can do about that apart from just revive up heal up and do it again it's designed to make you spend like a lot of units i think i used just over 2400 units trying to beat magic and there's no like, I wish there was like a super secret tactic to beat magic without spending any units, but but there really isn't. There really isn't. Even like a 550 Black Widow, you're still going to have the problem with the rage timer. It's going to go off quite quickly. You're still going to be taking damage whenever she uses Limbo from a special attack. So yeah, there isn't, there isn't a good solution uh, to fighting magic. It's just reviving up, trying to get as much damage you can in the time... Uh, period and that's pretty much it but the the best advice is to you know get used to magic uh magic's animations and timing and then when you're a little bit lower on magic maybe once you you, you know you're gonna have the assassin mastery pick in uh kick in then that's probably quite a good time to you know fully heal up and then just go for a full push on magic and try to get it down so yeah it's something interesting to bear in mind there uh so yeah once you defeated magic that is three out of five of the pain in the butt bosses down 
But then the next boss is also a giant pain in the butt. Your War Machine special one is not fully available and is really, he's really, really aggressive with this. Falcon isn't so aggressive. He doesn't trigger it like that often. It's quite easy to push past the special too. But War Machine, like whenever he has a bar of power, he just wants to slap that down as quickly as possible. So you need to try and push him to the special two as often as possible and make sure you've practiced evading it because it does take a lot while to get the timing right on it. Um, and yeah, just be prepared to to die quite a bit from special one block damage this one will eat up a lot of units uh, and also he like with his defensive stuff and armor up and uh, kind of passive armor as well he's going to be a bit more tanky than falcon he's going to take more hits to kill uh, but then once war machine is down that's that's four out of five of the pain in the bot bus is down uh, so then you've got our man you have a, a really nice breeze from like war machine to maestro where like all of the fights are entirely based on how well you can play the game which I like. It's how all all of Labyrinth should have been. But, uh, you know, we'll see. So, Ant-Man, you've got Bait the Special 1. And be aware that Ant-Man is quite tanky duped because, you know, he's going to be absorbing... Um a lot of the uh, the crits and hits you do and reducing the damage on those quite significantly so you know you're probably going to rack up quite a, a high combo on him and if you're finding yourself backed into the wall from baiting special ones because the special one you know does lunge him forward quite a bit you can use a special free to create a huge amount of distance uh between you and ant-man so that's a, a bit of a uh but pro tip as well if you uh find yourself being backed up against the wall against ant-man and then deadpool Deadpool is the easiest boss in the Labyrinth, so it's the Deadpool X-Force version. You've just got to bait the special one and be prepared for uh, the one-time roughly two-bar power gain at 30%. So you just need to uh, try and time that pretty well. But apart from that, it's just bait the special one. It's really easy, but also be aware that that power gain is going to come because it might catch you off guard. But providing you're continually baiting the special ones, A, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. And then you've got uh, Daredevil, which is just bait the special one again. And be aware that he's dupe level 99 and will auto evade all projectiles unless he's stunned. Uh, that sh I shouldn't need to say that, but I made that mistake as well. Uh, like, I, I fired off my special 2 a few times, only for him to auto evade. And I was like, damn, why did you do that, man? Uh, so that was a bit of a, a rookie mistake there. And then next up, we have Venom. Venom was my favorite fight. In the whole of Labyrinth, I loved Venom. So the, the key is just bait the special one. I find Venom special one so incredibly easy to bait and play around. But Venom in the Labyrinth, Venom anywhere, plays really, really aggressively. Like when he's charging at you, most champions do a couple of, uh, like maybe one, maybe two hits, and then they back off. But Venom will like constantly be lunging at you with like two to four consecutive swings most of the time. So you need to be nimble and ready to like keep evading backward until he will you know stop his combo so i i really like that i really like that great ai to play against i i love venom man he's a really fun champion to fight but that's all you gotta really bear in mind for venom uh next up you have iron fist Ah, oh, such an easy boss. Just bait the special one. Easy game, easy life. Uh, Civil Warrior, bait the special one. Special two doesn't doesn't really matter too much. Baiting the special one will give him a bit of armor. Uh, but the special two, it's a little bit it's a little bit harder to you know ramp up to that. If you're an evading god, then you probably want to try and push him to the special two as much as possible for maximum damage. But you know, if you're a little bit of a rookie like I was, I wasn't perfect at evading when I did the labyrinth, so I was just continually baiting the special one. And the uh, the trick is don't run in to attack him until kind of he's going to like slam his shield down and do this like pulsing bubble. And when the bubble pops, Civil Warrior drops. That's your cue. As soon as you see that bubble pop, you just run in. That's like the little timing uh, rhyme that I uh, I made up to, uh, yep, to get to get him down. And it worked quite well. We, we destroyed Civil Warrior in the end, but we died like, I think we died like six, seven times on him. It was a little bit embarrassing, but not too bad. I mean, they do all have like 1.5 million health, so it ain't that bad. Uh, a Maestro, Maestro, oh my, he is a, um, a fun, 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 fun boss. Uh, so be prepared to get very salty. That is the, the first thing I can say about Maestro. So, uh, if you're playing with Star-Lord or a tech champion, which I probably assume you are, unless you're playing with Storm, he will gain a random buff at the start of the fight and every 35 seconds. About half of these buffs aren't really too much to worry about, just like stat increases, like more damage, crit damage, more crit. However, there are three buffs in particular to keep a close eye out for. So you got Unstoppable, and bear in mind this can trigger while you're doing like a five combo. So while you're hitting him, he can just go Unstoppable and just punch you in the face and 
immediately. So you've got, got that to worry about. You've got Power Flood, similar to kind of the Road to the Labyrinth, if you had that. I think it's about 16% power, like every second or something like that. S similar timing. Uh, but yeah, that's going to mean his power goes up. And sometimes this can... You know, one stack, like, isn't too much to worry about, because it makes, like, the special two a bit easier to... Uh, to kind of like trigger because the special two on Meister are so easy to evade but the special one's a little bit more tricky but this can stack this can stack like two or three times and if you're on two you're in real hot water because he's going to be getting power so incredibly quickly and if he gets uh, three stacks then you're dead he's just going to special free and like absolutely wreck you and the uh, the final thing is regen. So regen, he can regen for 20,000 every second, broken down into two 10,000 ticks. And when you see, there's no way to out damage this. When you see this, you must pause and quit the fight immediately. You just gotta die like that. Uh, as soon as you see that, you just gotta be so prepared because there's no possible way in the current state of the game to out damage it. So that's what you gotta be aware of. You know, constantly throughout the fight, you gotta be looking for that regen. If it procs, you gotta quit like that. It's not fun. It's not fun at all. Just giant, giant amounts of BS. Um, and in my experience as well, Maestro seems to proc evade a lot more aggressively than the other Labyrinth opponents. We talked about that uh, as well. He also plays very aggressively, much like Venom. You know, he's going to lunge at you several times when he's coming at you. And uh, make sure you've practiced fully evading that special one in Chapter 4. I think we'll probably do a video guide on how to evade that in a little bit more detail soon. But I find that the, the, like, the key uh, component that helped me master that is not focusing on the beam himself but focusing on maestro in his hands because he does like one beam there one beam there and then a chest overload so the the timing of that focusing on his hands and chest like that helped me nail the timing of the uh, the level the special one at the end of it but yeah apart from that it's try to bait these special twos as often as possible as they are insanely easy to evade so that's a bit of a pro tip there but let's also just talk about the ending enigmatic maestro ability uh which is is kind of the uh, associates to the first point of the tech champion so whatever class you're playing maestro is going to have like an additional mechanic to him uh, so mystic he will apply different debuffs depending on specific actions taken by maestro and his opponents i have no idea what these debuffs are i don't know anybody that's fallen with a mystic champion so it it seems seems quite bad seems quite bad Cosmic nullify on specials that is like nothing that's cosmic cosmic characters get get it so easy on maestro uh, tech receives random buffs throughout the fight, so that's the unstoppable, the regen, the power gain. Mutant, power drain when blocked, and receive uh, armor up when activating a special one or special two. This doesn't seem too bad at all. This do I've seen like videos of Storm fighting Maestro, doesn't seem that bad. And then finally you have skill, which reduces opponent effect to accuracy when attacked. Again, doesn't, doesn't really seem that bad either. And science shrugs off debuffs, that seems pretty bad. You know, whenever you parry, just instant shrug off like that. Doesn't seem very good. Uh, so I, I think it's safe to say that, you know, Cosmic Mutant and Skill have the least amount of BS when fighting Maestro to go forward. And this is also a reason why Storm is such a popular alternative to Star-Lord. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for the Labyrinth of Legends guide we have wailed on for a very, very long time. But hopefully all of these tips and my experience uh, have helped you to get a bit more of an overview of the Labyrinth of Legends and the difficulty of it and how you can get around certain encounters. If you do have any tips or or tricks not mentioned in this video feel free to leave them in the comments again i want to continue working and expanding the written guide so if you've maybe completed him with uh labyrinth with like an iron fist or some uh, interesting or unique champion do let us know in the comments below apart from that ladies and gentlemen i hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy it feel free to leave a like uh take care and have an absolutely fantastic day